Today's random object. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And click the bell so you'll be notified of upcoming videos. On 11 December 1695, Bellamont was governing New York, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire, and he asked the trusty and well-beloved Captain Kidd to attack Thomas Tew, John Ireland, Thomas Wake, William Mays, and all others who associated themselves with pirates along with an enemy French ships. It would have been viewed as disloyalty to the Crown to turn down this request, carrying much social stigma, making it difficult for Kidd to say no. The request preceded the voyage which established Kidd's reputation as a pirate and marked his image in history and folklore. Four-fifths of the cost of the venture was paid for by noble lords, who were among the most powerful men in England, the Earl of Orford, the Baron of Romney, the Duke of Shrewsbury, and John Summers. Kidd was presented with a letter of marquee signed personally by King William III of England. This letter reserved 10% of the loot for the crown, and Henry Gilbert's The Book of Pirates suggests that the king may have fronted some of the money for the voyage himself. Kidd and his acquaintance, Colonel Robert Livingston, orchestrated the whole plan. They saw additional funding from a merchant named Sir Richard Blackham. Kidd also had to sell his ship Antigua to raise funds. The new ship, Adventure Galley, was well suited to the task of catching pirates. Weighing over 284 tons burthen and equipped with 34 cannons, oars, and 150 men. The oars were a key advantage as they enabled Adventure Galley to maneuver in a battle when the winds had calmed down and other ships were in dead water. Kidd took pride in personally selecting the crew, choosing only those whom he deemed to be the best and most loyal officers. As the Adventure Galley sailed down the Thames, Kidd unaccountably failed to salute a Navy yacht at Greenwich, as custom dictated. The Navy yacht then fired a shot to make him show respect, and Kidd's crew responded with an astounding display of impudence by turning and slapping their backsides in disdain. Because of Kidd's refusal to salute, the Navy vessel's captain retaliated by pressing much of Kidd's crew into naval service, despite rampant protests. Thus shorthanded, Kidd sailed for New York City, capturing a French vessel en route which was legal under the terms of his commission. To make up for the lack of officers, Kidd picked up replacement crew in New York the vast majority of whom were known and hardened criminals, some undoubtedly former pirates. Among Kidd's officers was his quartermaster, Hendrik van, van der Hoel. The quartermaster was considered second in command to the captain in pirate culture of this era. It is not clear, however, if van der Hoel exercised this degree of responsibility because Kidd was nominally a privateer. Van der Hoel was also noteworthy because he may have been African or of African descent. A contemporary source describes him as a small black man. If Van der Hoel was indeed of African ancestry, this would make him the highest ranking black pirate so far identified. Van der Hoel went on to become a master's mate on a merchant vessel and was never convicted of piracy.